you know, I think what's, what's very critical here, I mean, I'm talking to people who are probably um, aspiring and some of them are probably musicians. You know, one of the most important things is understand that uh, in our industry, <clears throat> excuse me, we make money and how we make money and how we use money is very critical at a stage where we're very successful. Unfortunately, hist history is littered with um, impoverished musicians who at some stage have been very successful. And today, they have nothing to show for what they have. And sadly, we, we always find other people to blame for you know, that situation. I've been privileged in a way that the people that I work with within the recording industry were, I may say, people who were willing to give advice. At the end of the day, I was surrounded by people that would say, look, when you make your royalties, ensure that you put them in the right space so that if you stop selling music, they are still, uh, you know, there's still a way in which you can you can survive. I mean, Pearl said, asked if there was anything that I've lost, fortunately, because I had made uh, maybe strategic investments and decisions on the money. I was able to keep some money, and that's how I managed to stay longer in the industry. We must also remember that education is very critical. Education is very, very important. However, the system of education at that time did not afford or accord African people the, the opportunity to study economics. You either had to become a doctor or a lawyer. And when you qualify as those people, you still have those challenges of having to employ a, an accountant, essentially most of them who had been white and at white universities and they were able to advise. And in a way, you'd be able to find people that are honest and sincere and advise the lawyers and the doctors how to. But in our industry, we never find such people unless you work with a record company that have people that have uh, the executive that has your interest at heart. I was privileged to have people such as those. I mean, there was Dennis Cusin, there was Peter Gallo, there was, I can name them. And in most cases, I would engage with them to say, listen, yeah, burnout is a hit, so what do we do, you know? I say, put the money where your mouth is. At some stage, I had stocks on the uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and I didn't know what it was. But I had Dennis Cuse and says, now, page over. And, and that way, I was able to learn how to manage and and of course, as I was growing up and developing, I had been privileged to have uh, a manager. Mm. It's very important that you guys find the right kind of management. What I know now, what I didn't know about money then is important that I know today. And if I knew then what I know now about money, I probably would have been talking about being Sipo Mabuse, the billionaire rather than, uh, you know. The millionaire. The, no. <laughs> <laughs> Multi. Well, I don't want to talk about being the millionaire. Let's just say that the royalties are keeping me alive. What I've experienced in terms of losing something is losing buzz, hype. Wow. But what I, what I got to experience is that I started making real money after the buzz, right? Then that's when I started, you know, uh, getting some brand partnerships and owning my music really saved me at that time because then I got to do stuff like sync deals with the DSTV over here, uh, Super Sport, use my song for like a year at one point. That got me through. And when you do those deals, you make quite a lump sum, right? And, and also like surrounding myself around the accountants, the smart dudes and the conversations and somebody like Jabba, who was very, Jabba was actually very smart with his money. Like Jabba never used to spend money recklessly. I learned that from him as well. And also le learning how to make hay while the sun shines, right? So taking that lump sum from a sink deal and reinvesting it into something that'll bring you 
income is something that I've learned as well. You know, that also got me through. So I lost a lot of buzz, but I, I, I experienced moves and planning that I did prior that carried me through the drought. Brand alignment is everything. So, you know, it's, it's, it's you guys have to share value, core value, principle, and every brand partnership I've ever had went over three years, you know? So I, I always found a slick way of kind of stretching it. And I've, I've, I've always been big on long-term relationships and long-term thinking, you know? So, yeah. And every time you see ads that's directed at, at us as black people, it's about save for your funeral policy. Why? Why do we have to save all the... Yes, it's fine. We don't want to leave problems for other people. But we should not be focusing on, you know, uh, uh, working on funeral policies. There's more that we can use money for. Mm. We can invest in other very interesting things. I mean, if you have a brand, you know, invest in it. Invest in things that will give you longevity in terms. We, we invest to live longer, mm -hmm. not to die sooner. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So when you make the money, ensure that it is placed in a space where at the age of uh, 70, well, I'm se almost 70, like and, that. and you can't walk like me, <laughs> and you can't dance like me. You know, you've been in a position where you can say, now I can retire, I can rest. You know, I was, I was talking to someone from All Mutual, some other, um, I said, you guys owe me money. Because, you know, old mutual demutualized at some stage. And those who had invested in, in insurance policies were given shares within. And, and I'm, I'm still coming after you guys because I think I still have that money in, you know, as part of my investments. But what I'm saying is that when we, it's, it's very important. You know, there's a, the, there's a book I read, it's called the richest man in Babylon. The richest man in Babylon. It's very important that we read. We engage people that understand about finance and ensure that when we make investments, we make investments for longevity rather than showing off. You know the biggest problem with us, our people? How greachelet, ureka koloi. We buy cars. Yes, we need to buy cars. We buy cars, you know that ad? They, it's directed at certain people. But we buy cars to show off, not to use. Now, instead of spending money to buy an apartment, you spend money to buy a car that you pay an, invest, uh, um, uh, an installment on when you should be paying an installment on something that is of value. In the long run, the car that you bought that is so fancy. As soon as it leaves the store, its value just goes down. But your apartment becomes an investment worth of your lifetime. When I was celebrating 10 years in the music business, I went and bought an Aston. Come on! And you know, and I remember four years later, I jumped into that Aston, I went to a dealership, I don't want it anymore. Because I, I got to a place where I, I felt like I was being owned by this car. But for me, you know, getting that Aston was just that power of intent, you know? I mean, I used to test drive that car, you know, and then keep patel. I was just like, you know, I've grinded for so many years, that's the car I want to buy. But I've, I've, I've learned there are more valuable things, you know? But yeah, it was a motivator. Uh, I think one of the most important things for me to advise young people, I know it's, it's a difficult call to make to get you know, someone that could advise you financially. You know, and it, it does not necessarily have to be family, but find someone that you can trust. You know, look, sometimes we don't want to pay 10% to someone because we feel that we can do it all. But in the long run, what is 10% of 10 million when you can actually lose it all because of, you know, a, a bad decisions? So it's very important that you guys, when you make your first one cent, put it in a kitty. They say, penny wise, pound foolish. Peter Gallo used to say to me, plant a penny and watch it grow. Oh man, um, get yourself a good lawyer, right? Very important, man. And um, 
I'll, I'll also give you a bit of background, you know. I think I, I kind of sounded like I got it all together earlier on. I've been through something where I, I actually got scammed in a deal, right? There was no contract. <laughs> I really messed up. There was no contract. It was just like, you know, you meet a guy that's like really smart. Really smart. The conversation is just, just elevates your mind. You really start to think you're going to be the richest dude tomorrow, right? And it just went by so fast. I did not even do a little background check on the guy. I was just so fixated by the idea of getting rich now, you know? And, you know, so, so a lot of the mistakes that I've made, you know, schooled me. You know, and doing a due diligence is like the most important thing. You really got to know what you're getting yourself into. And maybe sometimes we focus too much on the result, right? On the end in mind, this much money. But you really got to, you really got to do your homework. And that's, that's, that's what I take from that. So it's very important to read the fine print. You know, it's very important to get yourself somebody to represent you. And yeah, you know, and take your time. And then to the artist, keep the main thing, the main thing, harness the craft and find somebody that can manage your money so you can make all the right moves. One of the, one of the most important things is that someone that has an interest in the music industry, first of all, and they must love what you do. They must protect you, you know, someone who understands artistic temperament, someone that can relate to your life, your background, and everything that you've been about. It should not just be someone who's interested in how successful you can be, because they have a role to play to ensure that the success that you've harnessed is broadened and it grows and it develops. And if you have someone who's just interested in that, you've, uh, uh, you've got this hit song, so now they have to put you on the shows and collect the money. You don't need that kind of person, forget it. My manager works day in and out. He keeps me in the loop all the time. Everywhere I am, he's there, he takes pictures, he talks to people, he's, uh, to be honest, I'm on Facebook, I don't know how many times. I don't operate my Facebook, because I don't know how to, you know? He will talk to me and say, this is what we're gonna do. We have to work on certain things that are very important. He doesn't touch on things like, okay, what car do you want us to buy you now? He doesn't do that. So you need someone that really thinks about your future. Um, I know many people think, you know, when you leave school, the, the quickest thing, the, the, your escape, because you've seen everybody on TV, you've heard it, Cooley, you've watched him on TV, and he does all the ads and he makes money. You also want to be the same thing. And it's not gonna work for everybody the same way. It's not gonna be the same. Now, most people will be writing songs because they think they can use computer. That's limited understanding of what you have to be. Learn how to make music. Critically, look, I've been playing musical instruments for 54 years. Probably that's why today I can still perform for you guys. So don't just go in because it's an escape. It's commitment. You spend time, train your voice. Because most of you sing, yes. But how often do you lock yourself up in the room and then you practice for eight hours. How often do you lock yourself up in a room and work on your craft, on your instrument? Because once you're able to create and play a music, you're talking about skills, right? Once you're able to do that, irrespective of how long you go for, you may not make money during the period, but you sustain yourself with the skills. And one of the things that I always say to young people when they say, eh, Butsipo, we want to become a mus musician. And so I say to them, go to school, get an education. Once you have the education, you can decide whatever you want to be. Okay, please. Even if you have to go and study music, go and study music. If you fail to appear on TV, you can still go and teach. That is so true. You know, I watched your documentary the other day moment in time 
and I learned that you play, you start off as a drummer, right? You, you play the flute. You learn how to play keys before you dropped your first solo album. Am I right? It's when you did uh, Set Me Free, Rise, up to bur Burnout. And for, for a second there, I was a little embarrassed by the fact that like, you know, the, the conversations that I have with a lot of the musicians now, it's more around how do I become your best? <laughs> you know, it's about, it's about how do I become big? You know, it's, it's not about like when I was listening to you talking about you love practicing. I don't find a lot of musicians talking about practicing, talking about I'm learning how to play this. You should try do your hook like this next time. It's just a lot about how to become more famous. So we really got to get back to the skills. Yeah. And, and you inspire me because you are longevity personified. Because as a musician, damn, you're still mind blowing. And you're still here, right? Yeah. Love, love, and that's, love, and that's love. what we all yes. got to strive for. Yes. Any of you guys have seen This Is It by Michael Jackson? Have you seen that? Did you see what he was doing? How long he worked? And how, how many people were there just wanted to work with him? It was not overnight. It was hours and hours of practice, of dancing, and of directing. The, it's like this. There's a pyramid. It's tough at the top. It's crowded at the bottom. Where do you want to be? Mm. And how do you get there? Mm. Your, your network creates your net worth, right? So a lot of the guys will throw a big number just to show you, yo, I know my value. But how many guys are you producing for? You've got to, you've got to kind of uh, build a network. And you've got to, you, most importantly is, is how many people do you, musicians do you produce for that can back you up? Before you, you know, before you start throwing big numbers. I think that's the most important thing. Your network is your most valuable thing. So you got to build yourself up. You got to earn your stripes. It's very important. You know, um, one, one of the most important thing that I always tell people, um, even my children, I say to them, when you go out of your home, wear your jacket. And that jacket is humility. Wear it everywhere you go. Respect the people that you encounter because you never know where they will be the next day, where you will be. It's always very important to wear, to wear your humility jacket. And value cannot be, um, uh, cannot be uh, defined by how much money you are worth. There are certain things that you always have to look for in a human being. Integrity. Um, the one I've just mentioned, humility. And how committed to your own space and work you are. So that when you're committed, other people will be committed as much to you. Sometimes we have artists who, when they have to go to a show, I'm sure Thomas, you realize that every time John has asked, guys, you've got two minutes. I'm a minute earlier on stage. And it's very important to respect your audience, to respect the people that work with you. Because when John comes and says to me, Sipo, you've got to be on stage and uh, uh, 30 minutes before, and I'm late 30 minutes, do you think John will come back to me and ask me to do the same thing? No, he won't. He's going to look for someone else, irrespective of what talent you have. If you cannot respect what you do so that other people can respect it, how do you then expect to make success of it? Respect yourself, respect other people that you work with. Create a network, as Curly says, that will create your net worth. I believe in significance over success. And this space is significant, you know? It's about it's about building the next generation. So you've got to find what's significant to you. 
right? Jay-Z says something about like, don't go with the flow, be the flow. And I'm a big believer of that. And it gets very tricky with social media because I suck at it. I suck, right? But, 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 but I've been learning, you know? I'm, I'm a student and I've, I've also just kind of found my pocket in it. And I've, you know, I big up stuff that is significant. I follow what is significance to me. And I think that's what's just gonna kind of make it a bit easier for you. Find your true north. And, and go for that. Another thing most important, a business plan, right? So can I share that, John? How I ended up in this space is that, so I, I was building a space uh, in Honeyju, had a warehouse, built some studios, and I had this vision to build a creative hub, right? And it failed, right? Because I did not put a business plan together. There were no projections. There was like, it was just, I want to build this thing. I got a bit of money. I can do it. But however, some, some great music that we performed out there was made over there. Cages and recorded this album there. I recorded my album. But I'm just saying that the long-term vision of it was not meant, right? John was one of the few guys that came to pay me a visit in that space, all right? Literally, I think a day after I shut down, I was sad. I was just like, yo, not only I've lost a lot of money, you know, this is it's a broken dream, right? gives me a call. He says, yo, we found space. It's in New Town, and we're going to do this thing together. You know, so for me, that was like the best day of my life because sometimes just having the, the, it's like the power of intention. This is what I intend to do. You might fail at it, but a guy like John might just come through there and make it all happen, right? Yeah. Like that. You know, one of the things that I've always, when I was growing up, it doesn't mean black people did not know anything about wealth. It may not necessarily have been cash, but it was still wealth. Owning cattle, livestock, owning a piece of land. And the land issue is very critical because if you invest in land, you invest in something that is tangible and long-term. At some stage, I decided, okay, I've been making music, I've been, I, I am very lucky. You know, I don't wanna say I did it all. I think it's also a privilege that uh, my music has sustained. And for that, you know, I continuously receive royalties, hey, <laughs> cross my fingers that it continues for, forever. Um, but then at some stage I decided, you know what? Yeah, I can do this thing. I must do something else. And I decided I was going to run a farm. And how long ago was this now? I, uh, it's about 16 years now. Yeah, Give it up for the land, no. come on. <laughs> It's a well-kept secret. And if you can ask your cousin, Palisa, yeah. she's running the lodge. We have a, re a family retreat. So it's part of those things that we, and of course, every time I get money and I think to myself, okay, what pants do I buy? You know, what shoes do I buy? How much money can I spend on those? I ensure that it's limited to an, an, an affordable amount, an amount which I think I'm comfortable. But in most cases, it's money that I try and every time I, I, you know, I earn money from performances, from royalties, I plow it back into the business so that it grows and grows and grows. Plant a penny and watch it grow. Remember that, guys? Plant the penny and watch, watch it, it grow. grow. You know, when we were little, our parents used to buy money box, like silver money box. You all know that. Don't underestimate its power because every cent you put in, 50 cents, in the long run, when you look at how much money you've made, watch television. There's a woman that talks about saving money and it's a very important, Maya, Maya Fisher, Maya Fisher? She's on, on ENCA, sorry, I have to make that announcement. But watch that program. 
it will help a lot of people plant a penny and watch it grow. Every time you walk out of here, remember, plant a penny. Don't take that cent and think, ah, it's one cent and you throw it in. Put it in a box. Put it in a kitty. One day, when you don't have anything, all those cents that you've put in there, you will remember, you'll go back and say, hey, by the way, I have a little bit of money somewhere. My mother used to put money here. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know that she was saving money until when she had gone. And I was called by banks to say, listen, this is what your mother left for you and your brothers. So you guys must always remember that our parents knew these things, however little it was, it is very important to plant that penny. And watch it.